Hello, Llama engineers. Welcome back to another lecture on storage technology. Today, we'll be diving into encoded dynamic bulk systems, what they are, how they function, and how to enhance them using techniques that I've developed. In essence, a dynamic bulk storage system automatically adjusts capacity based on the quantity of items stored. Unlike static bulk systems, which have a fixed capacity that must be manually set for each item type, Dynamic bulk systems determine the way storage capacity is organized on their own in order to maximize efficiency without human intervention. To create a dynamic bulk system, the first step is to divide the storage capacity into fixed size slices. Typically, a slice includes a couple of double chests, offering a capacity of about half a million to a million items. It's important to choose slice sizes wisely because it determines the smallest amount of storage that can be allocated to any item type. It wouldn't make much sense to have large slices if you only have a few amount of most item types. Let's break down the basic logic of a dynamic bulk system with a simple example. Suppose we want to store 8 chests of redstone in a dynamic bulk storage system that is currently empty. The first task of the system is to check if there is an existing slice for redstone. If there is, the items can be stored there. However, in this case there isn't a slice allocated yet, so the system will need to allocate a new slice for redstone. We can store 5 chests of redstone in that newly allocated slice before it becomes full. However, with 3 more chests to store, another slice must be allocated to accommodate the remaining items. In the end, we have one fully filled slice of redstone and another slice with some leftover storage space. This non-full slice is known as the partial slice, and it will be important for retrieval later. Tracking the partial slice is crucial because it is best to empty it first when retrieving items. This strategy prevents cumulative fragmentation which can lead to wasted storage space over time. From our example, we learned that we need to keep track of what slices are assigned to each item type. This information must be stored in a way that allows for quick access. Remember, the system must query the system for slices allocated to an item type before doing anything else, and any delay in this step will increase the wait time for the requested items. Another consideration is size. Ideally, the bulk storage should be expandable without becoming unbearably big. A small system is also easier to build. To understand the challenges of developing dynamic bulk systems, we need to take a look at their history. In the beginning, there was Palapala's designs, and for a time, it was good. But Palapala's implementation of his self-organizing bulk storage system fell victim to issues with stability and scalability. These problems stemmed from the ways data storage was integrated into each slice. Pala used a remappable binary decoder that relied on toggle states to match incoming requests with the assigned slices. This approach required every piston in each slice to be activated for an input bit, causing lag and increasing the risk of data corruption. Additionally, the slices themselves were massive, making it difficult to scale the system. Problems with Pala's design led to the development of external logic dynamic bulk concepts. With this approach, bulk slices could be simplified into static devices, each with a fixed address. The idea was that by moving slice allocation information to a separate, specialized module, the system could be simpler, smaller, and easier to implement compared to dynamic bulk systems with internal logic. Plans for the system were as follows. Each bulk storage slice is represented by an item called the slice code item. An encoder reads the slice code item and unlocks the corresponding slice. These slice code items are stored in a shulker box dedicated to each item type, keeping track of the slices allocated for that type. To make this work, each box associated with an item type needs to be stored in a way that allows it to be quickly retrieved based on the requested item code. This means we need a separate callable storage system just to manage our bulk slices. To store and retrieve one specific box out of a thousand for different item types, we'll need at least a thousand addresses in that callable item storage. So how do we build a device that can store and retrieve one specific box out of a thousand? One way to achieve this is by using an item RAM. An item RAM is a device that can store and retrieve items from a specific address in constant time. It's like a computer's RAM, but for items. The fast constant time retrieval is achieved by dedicating a separate block to store items for each address, typically a dropper, and using redstone logic to activate the block at the desired address. This method allows for the fastest possible retrieval time but it requires a lot of space and redstone to build. The large size of the item RAM is a significant drawback, and so people have been looking for ways to reduce the size of the device by increasing density. Latest advancements have doubled the density, having the size of the device, without sacrificing retrieval speed. However, the device is still prohibitively large for most applications, and the search for a more compact solution continues. On the other end of the spectrum, we have the item disk drive, 
The item disk drive is a device that can store and retrieve items from a specific address in linear time. It is much more compact than the item RAM, but it's also a lot slower. It stores multiple addresses in a double chest, and the retrieval time is proportional to the amount of addresses stored in the chest, because it has to cycle through the chest to find the desired item. The speed at which the chest can be cycled is typically limited by hopper speed, meaning that the maximum speed is 8 game ticks per item. A box at the 30 second slot will take a minimum of 248 game ticks to retrieve, which is about 12.4 seconds. 12.4 seconds is a long time to wait for an item, so the item disk drive is not suitable for systems that require fast retrieval. To recap, item RAMs are too big and disk drives are too slow. The ideal solution would be a device that combines the best of both worlds to have both fast retrieval time and a compact size. Such a device would revolutionize the way that we build dynamic bulk storage systems, making them more efficient and easier to implement. So how can we achieve this? To answer this question, we need to seek inspiration from the world of computer science to develop a new approach to dynamic bulk storage systems entirely. First, let's make some observations. Recall that it is important to retrieve a specific box out of a thousand quickly because any delay in this step will increase the wait time for the requested items to arrive. But does the system need to know all the slices allocated to an item type at once? No, it doesn't. The system only needs to know this partial slice first, as it is the slice that will be emptied or filled first. Filling and emptying slices take a while anyway, so the system can take its time to find the other slices associated to the item type. We only need to be quick with the queries for the partial slice, and the rest can be done in the background. This observation leads us to the concept of lazy loading. Lazy loading is a design pattern commonly used in computer programming to defer loading an object until the point at which it is needed. In our case, we can apply lazy loading to the storage of slice allocation information. Instead of storing all the slices allocated to an item type in a single storage device, we can store only the partial slice in a separate storage device. When the system needs to access the other slices, it can do so in the background without affecting the retrieval speed of this partial slice. A data structure that best fits this concept is the linked list. A linked list is a data structure that consists of sequence of elements where each element points to the next element in the sequence. This structure allows for efficient insertion and deletion of elements at the start of the list at the cost of slower access times to elements in the middle or end of the list. With a linked list, instead of storing slice code items for all the slices allocated to an item type in a single storage device, we can store only the partial slice code item in the device. And when the slice needs to access the other slices, it can do so by following the links in the list, which are stored in the slices themselves. Only needing to store one slice code item per item in a fast storage device makes the device much smaller and easier to build. These items are not boxes, so they can be stored in boxes themselves. This means we can have multiple addresses in a single box, which is a much more compact solution. The boxes can then be stored in an item RAM or an item disk drive depending on the retrieval speed required. But wait, we still need to cycle through items in the box to find the desired item, which is slow if we remember from our disk drive. How can we speed up the retrieval process? The answer lies in using hopper carts. Hopper carts have an eight times faster transfer rate than poppers, which means that the maximum speed of cycling can be increased to one game tick per item. At this speed, the 20th slot will only take 20 game ticks to retrieve, which is about one second. That we need to cycle through boxes and not chests is another significant advantage. Unlike chess, a box can be easily transported using instant dropper lines to the hopper cart, thus one cart cycler can be built for multiple boxes, making the system even more compact and efficient. The result of combining a hopper cart cycler with a small item RAM is a device that has both a compact size and fast retrieval times for all addresses. This non-box item RAM can retrieve one specific item out of a thousand in merely 55 game ticks, which is about 2.75 seconds all while being comparable in size to an item disk drive. So what does a linked list dynamic bulk system look like in practice? Here is the logic it follows to store items. First, the system obtains a slice code item at its slot corresponding to the item code using the 1000 non-box item RAM. Then it inserts boxes into the corresponding slice. If the slice is full, the system pulls a new slice code item from storage to allocate a new empty slice. The now full slice code item is then put into the newly allocated slice, and the rest of the boxes are put into the newly allocated slice. This process is repeated as needed. Finally, the remaining slice code item is stored into the 1000 non-box item RAM, the slot corresponding to the item code, to finish insertion. The logic to retrieve items is similarly simple. First, 
system obtains a slice code item at the slot corresponding to the item code using the 1000 non-box item RAM. Then it retrieves items from the corresponding slice, testing if there are boxes along the way. If an item is not a box, it is held on for later as it is the slice code item for the next slice. If the slice is empty and the slice code item for the next slice is found, the system switches to the next slice and puts the now empty slice code item back into storage. This process is repeated as needed. The slice code item for the next slice is put back into the slice if found and the remaining slice code item is stored into the 1000 non-box item RAM at the slot corresponding to the item code to finish retrieval. In conclusion, the linked list dynamic bulk storage system is a revolutionary approach to bulk storage that combines the best of both worlds, fast retrieval times and a compact size. By using lazy loading and linked lists, we can build a system that is efficient, easy to implement, and scalable, all at the same time. All that is left now is to build it. I have posted the schematic of the 1000 address non-box item RAM in the description to help you get started. I unfortunately have no time to implement this myself, but I hope that you will take on the challenge and be the first to build a practical dynamic bulk storage system. So, good luck and happy engineering. Hello everyone, in front of me I've got my 1000 non-box item RAM. I'm going to show you how to use it. But first, keep in mind that this uses some hopper carts, which you need to fill up at the bottom dropper and at the top dispenser in order to use. Other inventories that you need to keep in mindful of are that you need to fill the um, item RAM spots, the downwards facing droppers with boxes containing 20 unstackable items. So there are 50 boxes like that inside the 50 item RAM. And so you need to set up 50 different boxes, um, but um, you can start them all off with unstackable items. The next thing you need to keep in mind is that each of these lecterns contain a book with 15 pages. And of these pages, only 1 through 10 are valid. So how do we use this? Well, first, we select the item code that we want. Um, I'll just select 111 for now. And then we click on the Execute button. That will quickly run everything. And then it will extract um, the item from that slot. The problem is, right now, we have none of the boxes uh, filled with items except for the unstackable dummy item. So all it did was extract the dummy item and put in the dummy item storage. So let's put an item into the system. Well, first things first, um, we have to make sure that this system is ready to uh, swap. And to check that, you just check these repeaters. If these repeaters are not flashing, then you're all good. Um, okay, so let's put in one item, right? That was it. Now it sent the item into the system. And you will find that if you check the first slot, that our, our item is indeed inside the first slot of the first box inside of the item RAM. We can retrieve that item again by, of course, clicking the execute button. Like so. So now we got that item back. And uh, we can do stuff with it. But um, yeah. Now let's try a different code. Try something a little bit more exotic. Try six. This should address the last spot in the in the box. But when we click on the execute button, you'll see that this time it takes a little bit longer to process items here. Um, the hopper carts are emptied at double hopper speed, so it's still quite fast, but um, resetting still takes a while. So let's put our item in again. Right, and now when we look in our system, see, here we go. The item is in the last slot. We can change the slot and put a different item in it. Now when we check the box again, see that indeed we put our new item in 
to a slot that is two slots before uh, our previous item. That makes sense because we de de decremented the code by two numbers. We can access this item again very easily by just clicking this button. Let's uh, go back to the last slot. And this time I want to demonstrate how fast this works. So uh, once I click this button, within 55 game ticks, or we should see that the item is inside this dropper. Step 55. So the box is dispensed in 21 game ticks here. And then Bart will begin to pull items out. Then now that card is removed at the correct time, such that when you look at the um, item there, it's, it's inside the hopper within five games later. ticks because I guess the server logic there it's inside the dropper now and so um, not included in my previous schematic was this dummy item storage here and this dummy item storage is something that is quite helpful for dynamic bulk because you won't always be having a slice code item inside the box especially if the slice is empty so um, in that case, it will just place a dummy item, which is an unstackable item, and we detect the unstackable item using an unstackable detection circuit here. It does delay the output by a little bit, but um, it's still within uh, a pretty fast time period. So now we can place a different item in, or we can place nothing in it, really. That will insert the dummy item. Done. Right. We check back. See, indeed, that it got replaced with a dummy item because we didn't put any item into the input. Now that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.